So in this video, I'm reviewing how to simplify square roots. And some of you told me that you already did this in Algebra 1, but if you didn't, take good notes on this. Also, at the end of this video, I show you how this connects to geometry, so make sure you stick around for the end. All right, so remember, when we're simplifying square roots, we want to be looking for perfect square roots that are factors of the number underneath the radical. So remember that our perfect squares are these numbers right here, perfect squares. Okay, so these are the numbers we want to look to make sure that, to see if there are factors. Okay, and remember we want the highest factor, the highest perfect square factor that we can get. Okay, and you get the idea. So hopefully you can generate the rest of that list. So in, if I have the square root of 8, I can see that 4 is a factor of 8, and that's the highest perfect square factor. So that splits up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. All right, so I'm using that multiplication property, but I'm going backwards. So I'm unsimplifying it. I'm breaking it up into two square roots. And then the square root of 4, we know, is just 2. So that's how I'm going to get 2 times the square root of 2. Notice that the square root of 2 is not a perfect square, so that just stays the square root of 2. All right, let's do this again. So if I have the square root of 18, look on this list, and which one is a factor? So 9 is a factor. So 9 times what gives me 18? That would be 2. All right, so now that I have one square root that is a perfect square and one that is not, I can actually take the square root of that perfect square, which is 3, and then leave the one that is not a perfect square underneath the radical. Okay, so hopefully this looks familiar, but if not, let's get some more practice. So how about 32? This one you might not be as familiar with, but 16 will be a factor of 32. 16 times 2 gives you 32. So that's going to be 4 square root of 2. And then 50, 25 is a nice factor of that. So that's going to be 25 times 2, so that's 5 root 2. Okay. Now, what happens if you don't necessarily get the highest number? So I'm trying to see if any of these have higher numbers. Oh, no, these kind of are basic ones. So let's pause the video, see if you can do these. So these are the answers you should have gotten. Notice that in all of these, when I find a perfect square, that the other one, like here in number 6, I have the square root of 4, square root of 3. The other uh, number underneath the square root, that doesn't have a factor in my list. It doesn't have a perfect square as a factor. So that's kind of how you know for sure that you've gotten the highest perfect square factor. Let me show you an example of when you wouldn't. So let's say we were simplifying the square root of 72. If I were to say, I'm like, oh, well, 72 I know can be divided by 4, and 4 is a perfect square, that would give me 4 times 8. So that would be square root of 4 and then square root of 18. Sorry if I said the wrong, I meant 18. So I would get 2 root 18, but do you see how 18 could be broken up even more? So that's how I know I didn't get the highest. Now that doesn't mean that you have to start over. You could just break down 18 and then carry down that 2. So I have 2 still in front, and then 18 can be broken down into square root of 9 and square root of 2. So again, carry down this 2. The square root of 9 is 3, and then the square root of 2 is 2. And keep in mind, these are all multiplied. So you would eventually get this answer. Now the quicker way is if you notice, if you're thinking in your head, okay, 4 and 18, and you, you know in your head 18 can be broken down more, then look higher up in your list. So 36 is also a factor of 72. So then I could get to the final answer a lot quicker. So either one is fine, but I just wanted to show you the quickest way is to find the highest factor. But in case you don't, you can just keep going until you do 
end up um, having no more perfect square factors. Okay? Now, the reason we are doing this in geometry is because while we've been doing the Pythagorean theorem, let's say I have something that looks like this, and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. All right, so we know that we would do a squared, square root of 3 squared, plus b squared, so that's 3 root 5 squared, equals x squared. So in the last video, in the, in the properties of radical video, we talked about squaring the square roots. And if you haven't watched that yet, you might want to go back and watch that so you know what I'm talking about. All right, so we know that the square and the square root cancel. We know here this would be 9 times 5, so that would be 45. So then this is going to be 48. So now when I take the square root, I'm going to get the square root of 48. But previously I said just leave it as square root of 48. Now I'm going to say simplify that answer because the square root of 48 can be reduced, right? It has a perfect square factor. Now if you do 4, if you're thinking 4, it would be 4 times 12. And, the, and that 12 can be broken down even more. So let's find something bigger than 4, and that would be 16. So that's going to give us 4 root 3. So the square root of 48 is the same as 4 root 3, and that would be my final answer. So when we get to the test, I'm going to want to see this now, not the square root of 48. Okay, so let's do one more example. So this triangle right here. Now we're trying to find the leg. So I would have x squared plus, here this would be 2 square root of 19 squared equals 10 squared. So I have x squared plus, this is going to be 4 times 19, which is going to give me 76. And this is 100. So if I subtract the 76, I'm going to get 24. And then now when I take the square root, again, don't leave this as the square root of 24. And don't give me a decimal. Instead, simplify it like we were just talking about. So break that down. I think 4 is the highest. So that's going to be 2 times the square root of 6. That would be our leg. Okay, so that's just one example of how we're going to use square roots in geometry, and, that's, and we're going to be doing that right away. There will be other times as well, but this is an important skill to master now so that it doesn't haunt you the rest of the semester.